I'm standing in one of the, the introduced grass uh, areas that we're trying to reclaim near the orchard house. We sprayed out here last, uh, last fall in an effort to, uh, to kill the introduced grasses and it, it appeared to be quite effective at the time. These things have a very deep root system though and they're, and they're quite hard to kill as can be seen that by the, the greening up uh, uh, that you can see here. So it looks like we're going to have to uh, um, take another shot at this after the growing season, uh, further on in the growing season. We did a great job with the, with the annual species in here, which, which were, were dominant, but, but these introduced grasses, as, uh, as others have, have, have seen, are, are, are very difficult to kill and will probably require at least uh, two passes with, with herbicides for complete elimination. So we started seeding the north center pivot last week. Um, we changed the design a little bit um, for a couple of different reasons. Um, first of all, we want to move the, the, the wildlife feed crop up onto the hill over here from where it was previously um, on the southern end of, of the pivot. So now we have the, the whole center pivot area divided up into eight different areas. The old weed area, which we're, we're going to replant with uh, native grasses, the new feedlot area um, or feed crop area up on the hill near the, uh, near the clubhouse, and then six different nine acre areas um, in the remainder. The, the grass area, um, and I say grass area because I was reluctant to put any any forbs or shrubs in there because we're expecting to be there to be some very severe competition from the uh, uh, wheat crop from last year. So we know that from our experience on the on the replanting the the grass plantation in the wheel line, we know that that we can plant blue bunch wheatgrass, slender wheatgrass, and um, basin wild rye with some, in the presence of some fairly stiff wheat competition as long as we mow it. So those are the three species we put in there for now. And so, but once again, there's, there's going to be potentially even stronger wheat competition out there than we, than we had in the, um, un, under the wheel line. So it, it's, it's still a little bit iffy. I do think it'll go though. Um, our new food crop area is up on the hill up there, and that's uh, um, a wedge-shaped area um, of 28 acres. It should be quite visible um, from, the, from the clubhouse and, and more central in the property. So potentially it will um, draw wildlife more towards the interior of the property and, and away from the... Um, um, the edges where where other where hunters and and other other dangers uh, would be present. So we uh, we've the drill has received numerous uh, modifications in its time in in Minnesota. One thing that we we have new are these imprinter imprinter wheels. And so instead of drilling the seed down into the soil, which is required for most of our, our grasses and a number of forbs, as well as some shrubs, the, the seeds are just dropped on the surface. The imprinter wheel then goes over and lightly presses them into the, into the soil surface. Yeah, and so the six remaining areas that weren't a crop, a, a wheat crop last year, or, or will be a, a wheat crop this year, um, consist of nine ac acre segments. And so we, we're putting in different seed mixtures in each, each nine ac acre segment. And the idea here is that we, it's, it's actually a very complex design. We've, we've got numerous species and numerous species mixes and how each of those species interact with each other spatially is, is varied in each mix. So we have each big seed band has a different species mix. 
There's five, um, five bins that have just grass species. And once again, each nine acre segment has a different mix. And then three of the bins have um, forb and grass mixes, forb, shrub, and grass mixes. And then the remaining two bins or tubes have um, just our, our fluffy seed mix, which is predominantly shrubs and um, our small forb mix. A lot of rice holes, we have a lot of different size seeds, so we need to put something in them so that the smaller seeds don't, don't just settle out. So almost all of our seeds are, are mixed with different amounts of rice holes. So these have an agitator wheel and then um, what's called a, a picker wheel. So it actually physically grabs the seeds and, and drops them down the tube. Here's our small seed bin. And these guys, the seeds being small, we can load one, a lot of seeds in there. So just these, the, these bins hold enough to do uh, um, all six nine acre segments. And these are, um, Alice is the, the fluffy mix broadcast seeded and then imprinted with the imprinter wheels. So we're still getting, we still have quite a few winter annuals. I mean, the conditions have not been conducive so far this year to come in and, and effectively kill these. But we expect uh, there to be a good uh, week or, or two at least, probably before our seeds start popping up. So we've got a little bit of a window that we can still come in and spray. So we're tentatively set if weather conditions are favorable to come in and, and spray next uh, Monday, which is uh, four days away. And um, that, that's a go if it doesn't rain and conditions are above 45 degrees, which we've had fairly consistently in the last week or so. We're going to have trouble, or winter annuals will, will be a, a problem. And we just, just purchased a mower to to um, um, help to eliminate them. We want to get as many of them initially as we, as we possibly can to minimize that, uh, uh, the amount that will have to be mowed down. Um, now we're in the grass plantation. We sprayed this uh, last fall with a pre-emergent herbicide to try to eliminate any, any winter annuals that, that may, um, may establish out here. And it looks like it was, we were hugely successful. You can see that our the, our seeded grasses are, are doing quite well, but in all the inner spaces, there's, there's almost nothing, nothing growing. And as you can see, there was substantial um, forb and, and other invasive annual cover last year, which uh, uh, this appears to have, have, have nipped in the bud. So potentially we could have a, a really nice clean seeding environment um, to take the drill and to put whatever we, we want to, to mix up with these uh, um, single, the three single species that we planted out here previously. All right, so this is our composter that we bought to mix up our seeds. Uh, we've got two different mixes that go into the seed drill. One is straight up grass seed and another compartment is gonna hold a mixture of grass and native forbs. And so what we do is we want to make sure that as the seeds are going into the center pivot area that they're going to be spread out evenly and the seeds are different sizes so there's really big bitter brush seeds and there's really tiny like there's really tiny uh, flax seed. So what we want to do is make sure that we mix it well enough so when it's coming out of the drill it's going to be coming out at the same rate. And so what we do is we've got our mixes of seed measured out and then we'll dump them into this composter 
mix it around and we're going to need to add rice holes to the forb and grass mixes and the rice holes kind of act like a little cup and they hold the smaller seeds and keep them from just staying at the top of the bin where um, and they'll make them they'll make the seed mix more even and so we'll just mix that around and once it's done the seed mix is going to go into these bins over here and those bins are going to be transferred straight into the seed drill compartments. Okay, so we put quite a large amount of seed into cold strat for a few months over the winter. And we just recently took that seed out. And we're currently planting that out into the center pivot area. Uh, what we want to make sure of is the germination percentage of the seeds that are going out. So what we're doing is taking the seeds as they come out of cold strat and other seeds that aren't in cold strat as well. And we put them on these petri dishes in water. And depending on the seeds characteristics, you either put them in the light or the dark. And you wait, it depends on the seed, but wait maybe a week to two weeks for some of them um, and see what the germination rate is. And what you can do is just count them on the plate as they germinate. Um, this is an example of bottle brush that we've germinated on a plate. Now this is a couple weeks of germination. We've already got green sprouts on there. So what we'll do is just take that number and if there's any discrepancies in the field, um, say some of the plants aren't germinating, we can take our germination rates and maybe extrapolate on whether um, it's a question of the seed not being able to germinate or if it's another question of maybe nutrients in the field predation or something other than that. So we can kind of eliminate the case for a seed not germinating. And we're also going to be taking these nylon packets. Uh, what I did was just cut nylon and stick some of the grass forb mixtures into it. And what we're going to do is go into the lines, um, into the furrow lines that the seed drill is putting down and just bury these in the soil and check on them maybe every few days and see if these seeds are germinating in, under the same constraints as the seeds that are going into the center pivot right now.